Hello and welcome to the third episode of an introduction to Bottle. If you haven't watched the first two episodes, you can find them on my channel. And please leave a like to this video or subscribe to my channel. Now I'm going to talk about routing static files. Static files are like images or CSS files and they are not served automatically. I will show you what it means. So you have to add a route and a callback to control which files get served and where to find those files. So let me show you what this all means. Now, I have this main.py and I've imported run route and template as before. I've explained all these in the previous video. And I've created a route, which is to the just home page and defined a function to bind to this decorator. It returns a template, which is called home. And I mentioned that Bottle looks for the templates inside a views folder and they should have a TPL extension. And what is this home? It's just like HTML, as you can see, nothing fancy. So I have only inside the body, I have these two tags. One is an H1 tag homepage and one is an image. I've also linked a CSS file inside the static folder right here. And I'm going to check if it works. If I link them and let's say dot static. So it's in the same folder inside a static folder. And this is a CSS here and the image inside the same folder inside a static folder. And this is uh, the image. Okay, now I'm going to save this. And let's run our program and to see if we can see this CSS file, which with the background color red, or can we even see this image rendered or not? So let's see, you can see I can see the home page, no change in the background color and no image. So what can I do to make these effective? That is, I want to have my CSS file and I want to render images. So in order to do that, you need to do what Bottle tells you to do. That is, you need to copy this and go back. And let's just paste it here. And we need to, as you can see, unresolved unre reference, let's import this one as well up here, static file. So now we are creating a route to the file and let's just call it static and angle brackets file name. It means this is going to be a variable. It could be a lot of things. It could be john.png or jpg. It could be style CSS. So, and with defining a function, you can call it whatever you want. Let's just call it static. And it's gonna take one parameter file name and it's gonna return the static file that we imported with two arguments of file name and we should specify the route. Where can you find this, these files? Where can you find these images or CSS files? So I'm gonna say inside the same folder as the main.py, the same folder, go to the views folder here, go to the static folder here, and you will have them. This is the root. You will have whatever file name it is and just render it. That's it. You don't need to do anything else. So now that I've done that, if I go back and refresh, you see these two changes are applied. This is a random photo from pexels.com and this is the CSS. That was super easy. Now we can do something else as well. So I have this people information here. You can see some name position and some stuff. And here I have mentioned the name route should be static Mary JPG, right? So we can now, um, we can now serve images here, let's say the same folder 
like this. And what we can do, I'm going to save this one and let uh, my home template have access to this information. So here I can say people is equal to people. I've talked about this before as well, this kind of uh, process. And now inside my home, I can have access to this information, right? So what I can do, I can go here and let's have a for loop. And I described, I mentioned that for loops or if statements, you can start by a percentage sign. So for I in people, because now we have access to people. So what I want to do is I want to have like a P tag and inside that double curly braces for Python expressions. So we have I access to the name of that person. What else do I want to have? Um, maybe another one. Let's have two more actually. One is the position of that person. And one is the image of that person, but the image is going to be inside an image tag. And what is the source? The source is going to be this. Now I can end my for loop right here. Okay, that's it. Now let's save this and um, yes, like this. Okay, let's save this and go back and refresh to see what happens. And you can see we have Merido manager, this, John Doe developer, this, and this person. I can also put him inside a table if that's better, I guess. So I can create a table, write, uh, let's say right up here, I can create a table. And the table is going to have a border of uh, two pixels, for example, and inside that let's have a uh, heading and that heading is going to be well actually let's have a T R or row and I'm going to have three headings. One is going to be name, one is going to be position and one is going to be uh, image. So now let us have another row, but these other rows should be populated by the for loop. Again, I have described this process before with the online images. So now I'm going to have, I'm going to create table rows using a for loop and I'm going to end it here. So I'm going to get rid of this end here. And now inside that I'm going to have TD for data for those cells. So let's just have two more and then we have a name here. We have the position inside another cell and we can have an image inside the last cell. Okay, so now I'm going to save this and go back and refresh to see what happens. You can see now we have name, position, image, and all this, super cool. So if you wanna make him smaller, you can add your own um, styles to the image. For example, here you can say style equals, um, I don't know, width, for example, 120 pixel, something like that. And this should work. Now let's go back and you can see, super duper nice. Okay, so that was it for today. I hope you, you liked it. And uh, please uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching and listening.